Um, Good day, Prince Alexander. Last time, we almost got ourselves killed out traveling around. But we did get one little pearl here. And that's what I need to ransom my ring back. I found this large pearl. Might it be valuable enough to ransom back my family ring? I have never seen such a perfect pearl. Certainly you can have your ring back. Oh, I'm glad you didn't sell it. I'm a bit attached to it, I'm afraid. Of course you are. You would be cold-hearted if you felt any differently. I am happy to see a family heirloom back with its rightful owner. How fare you, good merchant? Thankfully, I fare better than my business. <laughs> my shop is as silent as the moon these days. <laughs> An elegant little glass dish decorates the countertop. The dish is full of green mints offered for the enjoyment of the customer. Anyway, there's one other thing we need to do in town before we head back out. Hello, I will be right up. I now, talk to your guests here. what can I do for you? Good day, sir. Is there anything you can tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I'm sorry, but I have no time for idle conversation. I'm too worried about the princess. You are. Excuse me again, sir. You mentioned the princess. I told you I'm not interested in talking to strangers. No, you didn't. Anyway. Well, I'm a prince. Does that help? Determined to learn more about the strange man's relationship with the princess, Alexander shows the man his insignia ring and formally introduces himself. I'm sorry to insist. But my name is Alexander of Daventry, and... I appreciate the offer of the ring, Alexander, but I'm afraid I'm already spoken. Daventry? Where have I heard of Daventry? Flying Flitmice. You must be Prince Alexander. Cosima told me about you when she arrived home. How came you here? Why, by a ship, now wrecked upon the sand. But you know Cosima? She truly spoke of me? Yes, yes, I, I saw her briefly when she first returned home. She mentioned a prince to me, a Prince Alexander of Daventry. I'm afraid that was before she was told about her parents' deaths. You see, she arrived home a few weeks too late. The king and queen thought they'd never see her again. It is said they died of heartbreak. I'm afraid she's blamed herself. What a terrible homecoming. If we had only known... <laughs> Terrible indeed, poor thing. Everyone in the kingdom seems to despair with her these days. The streets are silent. Where is she now? The princess is sequestered in mourning. It's a rather dated tradition, and not required, but the wazir says she insisted out of respect. I see. You've yet to say who you are, and how you know the princess. I? Oh, pardon me. My name is Chalo. I am clown to the royal court, and have been since the marriage of Cosima's parents, King Caliphon and Queen Alaria. Oh, those were the happy days. The pair of them were so full of joy and life, so in love. And Cosima's birth. It would be hard to explain how long they had waited, how they had hoped for a child. I mean, she was such a charming little thing, smart as a whip, kind and sweet, Oh, she means everything to this kingdom, Alexander, and to me. I'm so terribly worried about her. About her grief over her parents, you mean? Well, the truth is, I do not trust the wazir no. or his plans for Cosima. I'm still living at the castle of the crown as court clown, his clown. But it is more to keep my ear to the ground than out of loyalty. I wish I knew what the princess thinks these days. If only I could find Sing Sing, Cosima's pet nightingale. 
I might be able to send the princess a message. As it is, I must wait for the end of her seclusion. Now I'm afraid I must hurry back to the castle. I'll try to return to the bookshop again later. Thank you for speaking with me, Jalo. I hope we meet again soon. Swishy fellow. Anyway, let's look at these love poems over here. Thinking of Cosima, Alexander decides to leaf through one of the volumes of love poetry. He reads, Thy hair, thy lips, thy beauteous face, and all thy studied female grace have won for thee anon a place within this broken breast. Not bad. And another. Upon the shore the lilies bend, untouched by worldly care, where shadow they her earthly bed, oh, that she were not there. Yikes! And another. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through, and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? What nameless thing has captured me, and made me powerless to flee? What thing is it without a name that brings my mind e'er back the same to thee? The name of love cannot apply. Its commonness does not decry the haunted, hunted, painful cry that my heart makes for you, that e'er my soul eternal makes for you. Hmm. A little close to home, that one. Alexander returns the love poem book to the shelf. What's this? Alexander is not interested. No, this. Alexander picks up the fallen page. It's the love poem he particularly liked. It must have fallen out of the poetry book. I see that old volume has lost another page. You may keep it if you like, sir. I have glued the stubborn thing back in place two times already. I do rather like it. Thank you, merchant. That's all for this shop. Let's head back out to the beach. Wait. Come back! Jalo. So you can see him in the distance there. It's a nice touch. Walking backwards. Good day, Jalo. Greetings, my fine-furred friends. Greetings, dogs. What's up, dog? We are under orders not to let you anywhere near the castle, Prince Alexander. Be gone! Damn you. There must be some way that I can get to Cosima. He did say Nightingale, right? She has a pet nightingale named Sing Sing. Like that bird up on that tree there. I have a nightingale right here. The mechanical nightingale's hard tin body doesn't feel anything like a real bird's soft feathers. Let's try this. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and places it on the ground. The mechanical nightingale sings a sweet, tinny tune. The real nightingale in the tree cocks her head and listens intently. The nightingale flies to a lower branch and looks at Alexander curiously, as if she were deciding that this human might not be so bad. Huh. 
I'm gonna try something. Alexander holds out his insignia ring to the nightingale, hoping she perhaps is the nightingale that Jalo spoke of, the snake and that there. she might be able to take the ring to Cosima. The ring is the one thing he has that might alert Cosima to his presence on the Isles. The nightingale swoops down and grabs the ring. She flies off towards the castle, perhaps to Cosima. Sing, sing. What have you got in your mouth, my pretty? A gold ring? <gasps> sing, sing. Where did you get this? Realm of Daventry. But this is Alexander's ring. Oh, my soul. He must be here. Sing, sing. I wish you could tell me what you've seen. Is he really here, then? On this very island? Oh, if only I could leave this castle as easily as you. Take this ribbon, Sing Sing. If you know where he is, return it to him. Please be careful, Alexander. It is so dangerous, and yet I could not wish you away. The little bird makes a delivery. Huh. What's that on the ground? It's a red velvet hair ribbon. Could it be? Could it possibly belong to Cosima herself? Or am I merely wishing it were so? Oh. Now watch this. Take the love poem. Alexander holds out the love poem hoping that the bird will deliver it to the same place she took the ring, in the chance that the receiver might truly be Cosima. The nightingale swoops down, grabs the love poem, and takes it towards the castle. Sing, sing, my sweet. You bring another present. Let me see. It is a poem, sing, sing. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? Oh, Alexander. I was hoping he'd return to you. Take this to him while he waits. Hurry, my fleet one. The little bird makes a delivery. What did she give me this time? The nightingale has dropped a bit of paper on the ground. Bring me a piece of trash. It's a note. Dearest Alexander, I cannot believe you are here, my friend. Please, please be careful. Abdul isn't about to let anyone interfere with his plans. Watch out for Abdul's genie, Alexander, and do not do anything rash. I am not without resources, and I will prevail if I can only find some small means of defense. Do nothing to try to get to me. You must not be endangered again for my sake. Greatly in your family's debt, Cosima. Alexander's hand trembles as he reads the note. For the first time in his long search, he has heard her voice again, if only in writing. No words of love, only friendly concern. Friend. Is the maiden merely shy, or does she regard him only as a brother? Anyway, that's all the time we have for today. I'll see you next time on Let's Play King's Quest VI.